Firstly, let me switch to the model layout. I will also turn off the work plane so that you can see it better and larger. Now I'm going to add in a sphere, then hit NNB. I want to crank this up to say 250. In this workflow, I want to follow a different approach. So this is what I am. Starting off with a really dense mesh. Now I want to get the detail in the middle as simple as possible. Let's go to the front view. I'm going to add in a cube and adjust the size by dragging these points. Now I will move this on the Z. We don't need that detail on the back. Now let's put this cube under a symmetry. Once I've done that, I'm going to select the cube and rotate it slightly. Something like that. Now I want to round up these sharp edges. To do that, I will select the cube again, come down over here and enable fillet. Now I will increase my radius all the way up to the maximum value. This is going to give us really precise rounding. Also, I will set this to 10 or let's say 15. Now it is time to subtract these cubes from the sphere. Let me select the sphere and put it under a boolean. Then I am going to select symmetry and move it under the sphere. Nothing is going to change because the boolean object is set to union by default, so I will set this to subtract. Looks nice, except for these point parts. To remove them, I'm going to use another cube. I will adjust the size, and then I'm going to move it and drop it right below the symmetry object. Let's make the final adjustments. That looks fine to me, which means that I can make the boolean object editable. But whenever I do this kind of very distractive moves, I usually duplicate my objects just in case. So I'm going to duplicate this and hide the original one and make this object, the boolean object editable. I don't need the inside, so let me tap V, go to select menu and grab font selection tool, select these polygons and invert the selection, then delete. We got the perfect outline of the detail we want. So now it is time to turn this mesh into something that we could use in subdivision surface workflow. To do that, I'm going to use vMesh objects. So let's add this one in. You can also hold down Alt and select the object. Give it a few seconds. All right, it looks fine. Obviously, it is too dense. Uh, also, I want to enable symmetry options because the shape is identical on x on and on y so i will enable x and y all right now i will start to lower down the density let's start with 50 to dense let's try 25 as long as i have the outline of the detail i could go all the way down so let's try 10 looks nice but too dense to my liking Remember, we have upcoming details, we need to fill in that hole. If you have that many polygons and edges, it is going to be a nightmare process to fill in that hole. So I will try to keep it as low as possible. So let me try my luck at one. I know it is too low. But I think I could work with it. I can remove that triangle. I could create a nice flow that goes with the detail. So I'm going to make this remesh editable. Let's duplicate it, make it editable. To fix that triangle issue, why don't we make a fill selection, invert the selection and delete it, just to make it a bit easier to work. First, let me grab the polygon pen tool and add these edges in. I'm going to get rid of that one. Let's drop this one into your SFD and see the flow. It is looking nice, but that polygon won't allow us to get a perfect flow around the detail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an intentional end gun around here. Hold on control and get rid of that edge. Now I will hit Q. Notice the flow. Like that edge loop. It goes perfectly around the shape, which is exactly what I want. We can... Slide them around. It is important to maintain an even edge flow, especially around the rounding. 
and that should be enough now let me use the cement rise tool not the object i will turn this off so i want to mirror this along the x we adjusted the mesh on the minus side of the x i will set this to minus the plus we need to mirror this on the y as well so the object is on the plus side of the y so i will set this to plus to minus and then uh, click ok perfect next up let's double click on these edges hold down control extrude scale them along the z by holding shift stop at zero then extrude tool extrude easing another one but this time i'm going to hold down shift to change the angle and that should be it now we need to fill in that hole let's try a close polygon hole tool close the hole then let's try grids it's not surprising that we get that result let me switch to the patch mode as i can uh, rotate this new geometry it seems like this is not going to work so why don't we change the patch width to minus one and then rotate it around okay that seems like it is working it's not perfect but we'll do the job now it is time to model these circular details it is going to be quite easy let's select these four polygons and apply fit circle tool move it into proper position and move these overlapping points out i'm going to hold on control extrude that out scale that in and in set another extrusion and finally i will only move that point now i want to double click on these edge loops to make a fill selection invert the selection delete these and i want to work on the flow just a bit more i don't like it it is all around we want something straight it is not necessary as that surface is you know flat so whatever you do even if you turn this into a perfect engine it's not going to cause a problem but you know me i want to show you the cleanest way or topology as much as possible so let me get rid of these and merge these points get rid of that h and that empty point as well now i can get rid of this one merge these points I am going to grab the line cut tool and add these edges in. Now we have that nice loop around the cuts. And maybe I can connect these two points. Connect that point to that one, get rid of this one, and get rid of that edge. This is an end gun. But remember, subdivision surface will turn this area into quads. And finally, let me connect that point to that one. Now we have all quads. Perfect. What's next? Well, we need to obviously mirror this. Right click. I'm just straight up click on the Smetrize tool. Now I'm going to select all the edges that I need to tighten up. then right click bevel tool i will go into solid mode set this to uniform and bevel these out let me readjust these points some of them overlap seems nice with q orbit around the mesh everything is looking smooth and nice except for that area and it is something acceptable the reason is we don't have enough resolution especially vertical resolution to cover up the curvature of a sphere so what i am thinking about is i am thinking about hitting ctrl z to remove these sporting edges then make a loop selection fill selection and split these out right click split 
Now I'm going to add in a sphere. I will set this to something like 200. This is supposed to be really smooth. Then I'm going to hide it. Now I'm going to select my mesh, hold down shift and add in a shrink wrap deformer to it. Once I have done that, I'm going to select that sphere as a target object. There is not going to be a big change in the shape. The change will come with another deformer and it's called smoothing deformer. Add this one in. It should be above the shrink wrap deformer. And notice what it is doing. I will turn this on and off. It basically tries to even out the polygon sizes. Therefore, it removes most of the artifacts. As I said, we may not have enough resolution, vertical resolution, to cover up the curvature. So I'm going to add that edge in. Yeah, this is going to help us a lot. I just need to add in one extra loop on the other mesh. So I'm going to add that edge in and connect it to that point, get rid of that one. Now let me deselect and apply smith rise. Also, before applying these deformers, we need to add in the same edge loop around here. I could add in one extra loop around here. And the reason is these two polygons, again, may not be efficient to cover up the curvature. So one extra loop may, may make it a lot easier. So I will select that loop, hold on control, clone these in. Let me select the proportional one. Once I have done that, I can merge these points. Click off. Yeah, this is going to be a bit better. Before merging these two objects and applying these deformers, I want to make sure that I have the same amount of edges on each side. So let me make a, what was the name? Outline selection. Not these ones. So it says 48. I'm going to hide this one and unhide the other one. This is already selected and it says 48, which means that I am good to go. I'm going to first apply these deformers, then connect these two objects, connect objects and delete. Now, all I need to do is, uh, you know, merge these edges, right click, stitch and seal tool, and the target points should be the points of the sphere, you know because it is the one that holds up the curvature. Okay, that should fix all the problems we had. Now I will select these edges. Then, you know, hit Q, bevel, solid mod, and bevel these out. Now this part is looking perfect. No artifacts, no bulging, no pinching. We forgot to select these edges. Let me do that real quick. Bevel. Seems perfect to me, except for that part. We have an engine, but I don't think it's going to be a big problem. By the way, whenever you are in doubt about your topology, try to deform your object in an abstract way. For example, let's try to add in a bent deformer to the mesh and bend it. Let's try out the parent. So what you do is you orbit around your mesh. You check the surface. If it is pinching or bulging free, it means that you are good to go. And I see no problem at all. Maybe, just maybe, adding those loops. The more geometry means more flexibility. Okay, just a quick hint. That seems perfect to me. So we can finish up the tutorial peacefully. I hope you did learn and enjoy this tutorial. If you have any questions, just let me know anytime. I will see you in the next tutorials. Have a good day.